They're yellow, dysfunctional, and classic. I'm a decent guy. <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 episodes of The Simpsons. <laughs> for this list, we're excluding Treehouse of Horror episodes because, come on, that's just not fair. Oh, crazy. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> but no, we're not limiting it to the first 10 years. It just kind of worked out that way. Number 10, Homer at the Bat. I have a secret weapon. A secret weapon? I wonder what it could be. When Mr. Burns bets that the nuclear plant softball team will win the championship, he puts some major league ringers to work. Our new security guard, Roger Clemens. Hello. Our new janitor, Wade Boggs. How you doing? Our new lunchroom cashier, Ken Griffey Jr. Hey, what's up, guys? Marking the first time The Simpsons won its time slot against The Cosby Show, this episode proved a celeb-heavy show, even one with athletes, can still be well-written and, better yet, actually funny. Wow. It's like there's a party in my mouth and everyone's invited. Excellent. Plus, you can't top the ridiculous things that happen to the players to make them miss the game. Good lord. Gigantism. You asked for it, Bugs! Ah! Number nine, The Last Temptation of Homer. Hi. Hmm? <gasps> Mama, what's the matter? Didn't you never see the naked chick riding a clam before? Homer is attracted to the plant's new employee, and horrified when he finds they have tons in common. I think we'll find we have very little in common. Cat talk, eating. The secondary story sees Bart become an outcast thanks to an unfortunate make-under. Oh, I feel so much better, Mr. Medical Science type person. With special guest star Michelle Pfeiffer playing the temptress in question, the Simpsons handle the tricky issue of infidelity in a way only they can. Hey, we're out of these uh, new love cookies. Well, open up the stick with your wife barrel. And as many great Simpsons episodes do, this one ends with a song. Oh, Margie, you came and you found me a turkey. Number eight, a fish called Selma. Hello, Selma Bouvier. It's Troy McClure. You may remember me from such dates as last night's dinner. If you like that song, get a load of this. Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. Oh, Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas. After his rumored relationship with sea creatures tanked his career, Troy McClure takes the advice of his agent, played by Jeff Goldblum, and tries resurrecting his reputation by marrying Selma. Sure, you'll be a sham wife, but you'll be the envy of every other sham wife in town. This episode reminds us that The Simpsons is successful thanks to its main cast, but also its stable of stellar minor characters. And Troy McClure finally gets the top billing he deserves. I hate every ape I see, from chimpan A to chimpanzee. Number seven, Deep Space Homer. <laughs> Those golden grams, crispy, crunchy gram cereal, brand new breakfast treat. Homer-centric episodes always hit their mark whether he's accused of harassment Precious Venus. or starting a business. Call Mr. Plow. That's my name. That name again is Mr. Plow. There's no logical explanation how he'd become an astronaut, but we're happy to go along for the ride. Well, Homer, I guess you're the winner by default. Default! Woohoo! The two sweetest words in the English language. Default! 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 <laughs> With pop culture references, movie parodies, guest stars, and phrases that have entered the zeitgeist. And I, for one, welcome our new insect overlords. Deep Space Homer is one of the greats. There's even a copy for real astronauts to watch aboard the International Space Station. You fool, now we may never know if ants can be trained to sort tiny screws in space. Number six, who shot Mr. Burns? Even the Simpsons caught cliffhanger fever, but to date, this remains their only two-parter. Spoofing Twin Peaks and Dallas, the folks of Springfield tackle an attempted murder mystery. Okay, sir, you're free to go. Good, because I got a hot date tonight. Hot date. Dinner with Fred. Dinner alone. Watching TV alone. All right. I'm going to sit at home and ogle the ladies in the Victoria's Secret catalog. See his catalog. After terrorizing the town in increasingly wicked ways, Mr. Burns is shot by an unknown attacker. Hey, man, are you okay? 
<laughs> Won't dignify that with response. Every Springfieldian has a motive, even guest star Tito Puente. But despite clues and a contest, not one viewer guessed correctly. Neither did Chief Wiggum. This isn't Mr. Burns at all. It's a mask. Oh, wait, it is Burns. Number five, you only move twice. Figures, Homer finally gets a decent boss, and he's a supervillain. Good afternoon, gentlemen. This is Scorpio. I have the doomsday device. You have 72 hours to deliver the gold, or you face the consequences. With several intertwining but individual storylines, including a James Bond spoof about hella popular one-timer Hank Scorpio. This episode sees the family follow Homer's new job to Cypress Creek. About those things you borrowed from me over the years, you know, the, the TV trays, the power sander, the downstairs bathtub. You gonna be needing those things in Cypress Creek? Yes. And of course, each member hates it for completely distinct and hilarious reasons. Plus, we get to see Homer succeed, however unwittingly, and that just makes us smile. Am I proud of you? Well, when you go home tonight, there's gonna be another story on your house. Thank you. Number four, Marge versus the monorail. Are we gonna die, son? Yeah, but at least we'll take a lot of innocent people with us. Written by Conan O'Brien, this is another episode that's high on the hilarity, Hartman, and song scales. The ring came off my pudding can. Take my penknife, my good man. I swear it's Springfield's only choice. Throw up your hands and raise your voice. The town gets duped into building a faulty monorail by fast-talking con artist Lyle Lanley. With the jokes coming a mile a minute, the entire town assembling for our amusement, and Leonard Nimoy to add some gravitas. Do you even know who I am? I think I do. Weren't you one of the little rascals? Marge versus the monorail ranks high when it comes to absurdity, just the way we likes it. Homer, there's a man here who thinks he can help you. Batman? No, he's a scientist. Batman's a scientist. It's not Batman. Number three, a streetcar named Marge. Hi, Ned, I didn't know you were an actor. Oh, indeed, doodly. Uh, I've even been in a streetcar once before. I played Blanche Dubois. Although it pissed off all of New Orleans, this episode is a fave of creator Matt Groening since it hit hard with musical numbers, movie spoofs, and shirtless flanderises. Stella! Can't you hear me yell? You're putting me through hell. With Homer acting boorish in the face of Marge's acting aspirations, this is one ep that demonstrates this cartoon's ability to confront genuine relationship problems like any sitcom. Only when the Simpsons do it, it's not nearly as preachy. Looking for a spot to fun with the Mrs. A, governor? Shut up, boy. Number two, Cape Fear. Oh my god, someone's trying to kill me! <laughs> oh wait, it's for Bard. We defy you to find a peripheral character as beloved as Sideshow Bob. Take care, Snake. May the next time we meet be under more felicitous circumstances. Gah? With Kelsey Grammer providing his dulcet tones, the series takes on a Cape Fear parody with almost shot-for-shot -shot precision. If you don't mind, we're trying to watch the movie. Hey, Help me get my head out of this toilet. <laughs> when Bob sets his sights on Bart once again, the Simpson family ends up in witness protection, living on a houseboat. Between the singing, grandpa gag, cacti, and rakes, <laughs> We still can't pick a favorite part. Doesn't it say die, Bart, die? No, that's German for the Bart, the. No one who speaks German could be an evil man. Number one, last exit to Springfield. Tonight on Smartline, the power plant strike. Argle bargle or foo for all. This episode is line after line of ultra-quoted dialogue. It was the best of times. It was the blurst of times. You stupid monkey. Oh, I tied an onion to my belt, which was the style at the time. Sorry, Mr. Burns, but I don't go in for these backdoor shenanigans. But not only is it an onslaught of jokes that have been repeated since it aired, it's also a well-thought-out story. Hey, what did this job pay? Nothing. Don't! Unless you're crooked. Woohoo! 
Homer's unanimously elected head of the nuclear plant's workers' union, and Mr. Burns, acting characteristically Grinch-like, revokes their dental plan. Bullseye! <laughs> Thanks a lot, Carl. Now I've lost my train of thought. Dental plan! Lisa needs braces. Dental plan! With Lisa's dentist serving as an episode highlight, Last Exit to Springfield is relevant, irreverent, satirical, and perfect. Homer, organized labor has been called a lumbering dinosaur. <coughs> uh, my director is telling me not to talk to you anymore. <coughs> With over 500 episodes of The Simpsons in the can, we're sure we've left out a few of your favorites. All opposed? Me. Nee. Who keeps saying that? Which do you think is best? Hey, wait a minute. There's no such thing as a talking dog. <coughs> Damn straight. For more top tens about your favorite shows, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Now let's all get drunk and play ping pong. Yeah!